Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here in Nashville, Tennessee, covering the Army Aviation Association of America's annual conference and trade show, the number one gathering of U.S. Army aviation leaders from around the world, gathering here to talk about tactics, technology, uh, industrial relations, budgets, and more. Our coverage here is sponsored by Bell and Leonardo DRS, and we're here at the General Electric stand to talk to Christina seda Holly, uh, who is the Vice President and General Manager for uh, 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 the Military Operations the engine, the sustainment side uh, on the, the GE Aviation uh, military side of uh, the equation, the T-700, and keeping that engine, uh, which is a, a staple of all Blackhawks and Apaches, uh, in uh, shape and running is, is uh, part of your portfolio. Uh, more than 20,000 of those engines have been uh, delivered. Uh, we talked to Mike Souza about the, the T-901, uh, which is the next generation that's under protest, but we'll see whether or not you guys uh, keep that contract. But T-700 uh, is going to be in the inventory for many more decades to come. And uh, you guys finished servicing your 10,000th uh, T-700 in the Corpus Christi, uh, where you are partnered with the Army on that and the Army uh, Depot. So talk to us a little bit about what happens when those engines come in, because they don't really get returned to the customer the same way, way they were when, you know, you guys are putting all kinds of upgrades in there. So tell us what happens when you guys take it over and then, you know, the the uh, improvements you integrate into it before returning it to the customer. Sure, so we've had a long-standing partnership with the CCAD, um, the Army Depot, a uh, long-term service agreement where we partner with them. We provide engineering services, parts, of course, logistics support. And so when the engine comes in, it's really about tearing that engine down, seeing what you find, and, and building it back up to a serviceable, so serviceable engine so it can get out to the field. And it's important that we go as fast as possible, provide a quality product. But to your point, you know, we as we tear it down, there's things that we may need to incorporate configuration-wise, upgrade-wise, just to make sure that those are those engines go out into the best standard we have available. And so that's really engine by engine um, dependent. And um, you know, we just work with the, the CCAD workforce to make that happen. Uh, and one of the uh, questions I've always had is, so how much of that engine, as it was originally made, is still in that engine when it's retired? thousands and thousands and thousands of hours later. Like how much of it is actually, you know, it's yeah. a little bit like looking at a, at a Chinook. Its date plate might say 1962. Right. The date plate is only the only thing that's from 1962 right. on some yeah. of those airplanes anymore. Yeah, there, there is some, you know, um, some parts that are replaced. I couldn't give you a percentage to be right. quite honest with you. It'll really depend on the engine, the conditions that they saw. And, um, you know, we're always looking at new repairs. Um, so as we develop new repairs, we may be able to fix that part and put it back in the engine. So it really just depends on, on that engine. Yeah. Um, let's talk about additive. I mean, that's something yeah. where the company has invested a lot of money in it, Absolutely. but it's revitalized. It, it's changing everything about how everybody does. Right. I love going to some of these stands and there are these mm -hmm. prototype systems and you're looking at them and you're like, did you guys print this? And they're like, yep, yeah. you know, actually everything on the stand has been printed, right? right? But now we're getting to the point where we're doing this with metals. There's very little, um, um, finishing that's required for some of these parts because I remember once upon a time it was you were going to print it it was going to be rushed but you had to uh, mill it anyway right, right. so so talk to us about yeah. how your guys are folding in additive right. throughout the entire system yeah that's a great point so we've made a tremendous investment in additive we've stood up a whole GE additive business and our aviation business partners with them on new parts for new engines like the ITEP engine we have a number of additive parts in there we have leveraged a lot from what we're doing on the commercial side with things like the leap engine where we have have additive parts flying. Now to your point, you know, there's differences in additive as far as parts that don't need finishing and others that do. So it kind of varies, but it's really about, um, there's a strong demand from our customers right now and how do we help meet their needs? You know, especially from a readiness standpoint, how can we print a part faster when the supply chain is constrained? so that they can have that part available, put it back in the engine and, and get flying again, or it could be a ground vehicle. I mean, there's a lot of different applications. Really, the sky's the limit when it comes to additive. Uh, and uh, to talk about artificial intelligence, predictive, right? Uh, You're part of that whole team. The Army's working it. We've right. talked to the Air Force uh, in terms of you know the kind of AI, big data approaches they're yeah. using, for example, in the transport fleet, mm -hmm. but also in the fighter and bomber fleets. Talk to us about how the Army and you guys are working together in terms of artificial intelligence to do better predictive maintenance and actually reduce maintenance or improve yeah. it when it does come in. Right, and I, I can't really speak to the ITUB part, my excuse are probably my colleague is better, um, but we're using that more and more on the maintenance side to say how is the engine 
operating, behaving, so that when it comes in for maintenance, we can predict it ahead of time and really make it just a more efficient process. And then we know ahead of time as well what parts we might need or what's going on. It's just a way more efficient process for us all to operate under. Christina Sedahali, who is the Vice President and General Manager for uh, uh, General Electric Military Engine yeah. Customer uh, Support. Thank you uh, so much, we really appreciate it and best of luck. Thank you, thanks for having me.